All right, it, let's, if you have your, uh, let's go over the post-test. Most of you have already done your self-test, and I know you're giving that as a test, right? So would you like me to just, I'll do the post-test with everybody. Yeah. Okay. I actually have it up here, so I'll, I'll put it yeah, up on the board. If you want to turn in your radiation safety pre-test, we'll, uh, with your name on it, we'll correct it and get back to you. Just turn it in the meeting in the back. Actually, we have enough time. Do you want me to go over the pre-test yeah, with them? Yeah. Okay. You can self-correct. Okay. Now, right before you start that network, if, if somebody has to leave for some reason, please use the evaluation. If you can turn it on, yeah, you can turn it on now. And you just follow the little instructions on your blue card while you're listening to the answers to your post test. Thank you. Work well. Okay, all ready? Excuse me while I put on my glasses. You're ready, then I'm ready. All right, who was responsible for We're doing the, the pre test first. Who was responsible for the discovery of x ray? D is correct, Wilhelm Rankin. Number two, x rays can be described as a form of C, electromagnetic radiation. What's the primary, primary is the key word here, difference between x-ray and gamma rays? The origin. They, they can be the same energy and the same frequency, but typically gamma radiation is a shorter wavelength, higher frequency than normal diagnostic x-ray. The largest source of radiation to the population is from? Radon gas is correct. That's C. Number five, most people receive blank radiation every day of their lives. One milligram. Yes, that's uh, A. Number six, what is the primary purpose of added filtration to the x-ray beam? Yes, to reduce the skin dose. Since x-rays are created, I didn't really talk about this, but we do filter the beam because we get polyenergetic x-rays produced in the x-ray too, low energy and high energy. So by filtering it, the filter absorbs the lower energy photons that will be absorbed by the patient's skin. This reduces patient's infant skin dose. The amount of filtration is determined by the KVP of the unit. So if you have a mammal unit, for example, that operates on 20 to 30 KVP, it only has 0.5 millimeters of filtration. If you have a fluoro unit that operates on 110 kVp, then it would have 2.5 millimeters of filtration. Higher the kVp, the more filtration is required. Ignore the numbering on these. I realized when I made this that the numbering's all messed up. But number seven, the primary factor controlling the contrast of a radiograph is A, kVp. Now that's not true with digital. When you talk about digital, the contrast is controlled by the computer, so KVP kind of goes out the window with digital. Of the following radiation protection principles, which is easiest and most effective in reducing patient exposure? Distance, Distance. very good. Placing the x-ray source below the table reduces? All of the above. All of the above. Occupational exposure, scattered radiation in the room, and leakage radiation uh, in the room. Not leakage radiation coming out, it would be the same, but you won't get exposed to it. Most reported instances of overexposure of occupational workers results from holding, holding patients. patients. Right. During fluoroscopy, the technologist should wear the film badge outside of the lead apron. Right. Unless they're pregnant, then we wear one under and one outside. Let's see if you can get this one. What's a typical exposure a patient would get for a GI exam for five minutes? Very good. Say it out loud. D. D. D, 10 to 25. Remember, with digital, we're giving them about 2 R per minute. With conventional, about 4 to 5 R per minute. So in five minutes, they're going to get somewhere between, between 10 to 25 rads, typically. With digital, we give them 2 R per minute. And with conventional, about 4 to 5 R per minute. So you multiply that. 2 times 5 would be 10. And 5 times 5 is 25. So somewhere in that range, depending upon what type of unit you're using. Most fluoroscopic units operate on what kind of a current? 2 to 5 MA. That's with the old-fashioned conventional units. 
Digital units operate on 100 or higher MA. That's why you get better resolution with a digital unit. Number 14, the largest source of scattered radiation to the radiographer and the radiologist during fluoroscopy is from the patient. That's C. Number 15, for a fluoroscopic system equipped with automatic brightness control, where the x-ray tube is fixed below the table, moving the image intensifier away from the patient will what? The increase the radiation. Increase the patient dose. Right. Increase the patient dose. The maximum amount of cumulative time that's allowed for continuous exposure during fluoroscopy? Five minutes. Right. A cumulative timing device activated by the fluoroscopic exposure switch shall all of the above. It's required on all units, gives off an audible signal, and once you've uh, deactivated it, it should stop the production of x-rays. Oh, I missed it. I'm sorry. Bucky slot covers and protective curtains of a floor unit must have a minimum lead equivalency of? It's actually, C is, it should be 0 0.25 for Bucky slot covers. Uh, now for aprons, it's 0.5. So aprons and gonadal shields, 0.5. Everything else is 0 0.25. Gonadal shielding in the state of California must be at least 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Twice the normal. Because gonads are usually, uh, you know, we're trying to protect them from primary beam. Okay, this is where the numbering gets a little wacky. So we'll go with 20 and just renumber from there 20, 21, 22. Uh, during fluoroscopy, the technologist should wear the film badge outside. outside. Okay. A film badge report expresses an individual radiation dose equivalency in rims or sieverts. Right. How many rims make a sievert? 100. Right. 22. An annual whole body dose limit to occupationally exposed individuals is how many rims per year? Five. Five rim per year or 5,000 millirim. The majority of workers in, um, in fields, <laughs> in fields involving the use of radiation receive? B. B. 88% get less than 100 millirim per year. Average is? 0 0.07. 0 0.07, right. During the stage of development, during which stage of development is the fetus most sensitive? A, organogenesis. Which weeks are those? Two to eight. Two to eight. Right. The dose, the dose to the patient from the radiographic procedure. A. Increases as the area of exposure increases. Okay. Um, it doesn't increase as the source of the image distance increases. As we move the x-ray tube further away from the patient, the dose actually goes down. We want that x-ray tube to be as far away from the patient as possible. What happens if you move the image intensifier away from the patient? The dose goes up. So the only correct answer here is A. Gonadal shielding should be used whenever D. The gonads are within five centimeters of, of column A to B, and they don't interfere with the exam. Most people aren't going to use gonadal shielding if they're x-raying a hand or a foot, you know. And number 27, the minimum source to skin distance required for mobile radiographic x-ray units is maintained by? D, yeah, the collimator head that's on a portable unit or the basket or spacer that's on a mobile unit. Okay. Number 28, which says 20, exposure to the radio to the radiography, that doesn't make sense, to the radiography during due to scattered radiation from the patient. This is kind of a tough one. B is correct. Decreases inversely to the square of the distance. So the exposure that you're getting is going to decrease as you move away from the patient. The square of the distance, double your distance, it's going to go down by four, triple your distance, nine, four times the distance, 16. Mm -hmm. Lead aprons usually provide shielding. Oh, I missed one. Let me go back. For an average 
fluoroscopic examination, the entrance skin dose to the patient is? B is correct, four R per minute. Lead aprons usually provide shielding equivalent from blank to blank lead. C is correct, 0.25 to one millimeter of lead. All occupationally shielding devices must contain a minimum of B, 0.25 millimeters. The most conservative type of dose curve, I showed you a picture of this today, and the curve upon which radiation guidelines and regulatory requirements are based is? Come on, step out there, guess. A, linear non-threshold, straight line, no area that's not considered um, below which you can't get an exposure. Number 33, pulse image acquisition is most effective in? C, reducing overall exposure rate. Which of the following x-ray interactions results in clear radiopaque areas on the radiograph? Which one? B, photoelectric effect. Lead aprons, gloves, glasses protect the operator from which type of interaction? A, Compton scattered. <laughs> I'm going to give you another try. Uh, contrast agents such as barium and iodine enhance which type of interaction? B. B, yeah, photoelectric effect. ALARA is an acronym for? B, as low as reasonably achievable. Last question, the maximum permissible dose limit for occupational exposed individual is? D, all of the above, they're all equal. Okay. You made 100? All right. <laughs> the winner is? Okay, we call multiple choice, multiple guess. Fill-ins are a little bit harder, right? You have to have the answer where? In your, In your head. Okay, so if you think you know the answer, yell it out and we'll tell you if you're right or not. What are x-rays? If you had to define them in one term, what would you call them? Electromagnetic, Electromagnetic energy. That's correct. Okay, what's the difference between, where's the, the guy in the back there? Orange. In the blue shirt? What's the difference between, no, actually I want to ask you the next question. I'll skip you for now. What's the difference between uh, x-rays and gamma rays? Origin. Origin is correct. Okay, this is your question, sir. What's the difference between a rad, a Rankin, and a rim? Uh, well, the rad is the amount that's absorbed. The uh, rim is the uh, something that comes to the rad, the uh, quantitative, uh, yeah. Occupational exposure. The quantity of factor times the radiation. Uh, <laughs> they can't read it. <laughs> what about the Rankin? What's the Rankin? Exposure in? Exposure. You sound like a med student, Dr. Sigmund. You don't have to know the information. You just have to know where to find it, right? Yeah. That's the secret. There's two types okay. of information. The stuff that you can go look up and stuff that you have to know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Right now, it's the stuff you have to know. So the Rankin is exposure in air, right? The, the difference between the three basically is where you're measuring them. All three are equal if you're talking about x-ray. So Rankin is what's coming out of an x-ray machine. It's exposure in air. Okay. Rad is exposure in tissue. 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 And RIM is exposure to the badge. the badge. That's correct. So all three are equal when we're talking about x-ray. OK, who can give me an example of particulate radiation? Alpha, Alpha particles. What else? Beta particles, what else? Fast moving neutrons. Those are all examples of particulate radiation. Where does particulate radiation come from? Radioactive. Nucleus of radioactive material, that's correct. Okay, who and when? Who discovered x-rays and when? 1895, okay. What's the largest source of radiation exposure? Radon, radon, radon gas. Okay. Uh, what's the purpose of filtering an X-ray beam? What does it do? What? It decreases skin exposure. Entrance skin dose is reduced by filtering the beam. The quantity of X-rays produced is controlled by MA. Very good. MA or MAS. The quality of X-ray, wavelength, and frequency. KVP. 
Okay, we didn't really talk about the production of BRIMS and characteristic radiation. However, there are two types of radiation produced in the X-ray tube. The majority of it is BRIMS. It's when the X-ray, when the electrons are basically just slowed down, and then the energy is converted to uh, electromagnetic energy. The other type is when the K-shell electron is knocked out of the tungsten target. That's characteristic radiation. Characteristic radiation can only be produced above 70 kVp because the binding energy of the K-shell is 69.5. So 70, 70 kVp and above, 10% of our beam is characteristic. The rest of it is brimstrong. The only problem with brimstrong radiation is it has soft and hard radiation. It's a heterogeneous beam, whereas characteristic all has the same energy. Okay? So that was number 10. The answer was brims. Uh, the contrast of, of a film is controlled by KVP, whereas the density is controlled by MA. Very good. X-ray interaction, which results in radiolucent areas on the image, are photoelectric. Photo right. Lead aprons protect operators from what type of interaction? Compton scatter. Actually, that one question, X-ray interactions resulting in radiolucent, radiolucent and radiopaque. Radiolucent areas is not going to be photoelectric effect. It's, well, radiolucent areas on the film would be, would be dark areas on the film, right? So that's when the X-ray goes through the patient without interaction. Radioopaque areas would be white areas on the film caused by photoelectric effect or absorption. So correction on number 13. Change it to radio Yeah, if you change it, but it, it's actually remnant radiation coming from the patient causes the radio um, so loosening. Any questions? Oh. <laughs> well, if you want photoelectric, it's radio If you want radio lucent, it's radio lucent areas are areas of the body that the X-ray can pass through. So it would just be remnant radiation that comes out through the patient. So what's the answer? Remnant radiation. Remnant radiation is the answer for number thirteen. Okay, lead aprons protect the operator from what type of interaction? Compton, Compton scatter. Contrast agents enhance which type of interaction? Photoelectric. Okay. Anybody remember what ALARA stands for? Very good. Leukemia is an example of a stochastic or a deterministic effect? <coughs> stochastic. It's probable. It's not certain. The most sensitive time of a cell's life is during the M phase of mitosis. That's right, metaphase. A which effect, direct or indirect, occurs more frequently within a cell? Indirect. 80% of the time indirect, about 15-20% uh, of the time direct. Who can tell me the difference between direct and indirect? Bonus point. That's correct. Exactly right. Direct is when the X-ray photon interacts directly with the DNA. The indirect is when free radical breakdown radiolysis causes damage to the cell. That's Dr. Pure there. Dr. It's true. <laughs> Very good. You guys always do good when, when we put, give a test, everybody comes to life. I should start that at the beginning of the class. Get your attention. All right. Um, the most sensitive time of embryonic development is during organogenesis, second to the eighth week. What are the most sensitive cells in the body? Lymphocytes. Lymphocytes, right. Okay, maximum dose rate for fluoroscopic. What's the maximum dose rate? 20. That's boost position? 10. 10, and routinely it should have, shouldn't be higher than 5, 5R five per minute. These are the dose levels that they give you. Okay, so 10 for um, most, op most automatic brightness controls, they can operate at a maximum dose rate of 10 if they're not in the boost position. Okay, boost position, maximum yeah. dose rate? 20. 20. All right. The highest exposure rate for recording, what kind of recording will we be doing? Cine. Cine. Cine fluorography has the highest recording or dose rate. Okay, it can go up to 100. The lowest recording? Spot. Digital spot. Digital spot. Last image hold. Okay, minimum source distance for a C arm. 12 inches or 30 centimeters. 12 inches or 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters. Right. 
Which question? In a digital disc recorder gives you the lowest dose. Number 25, the lowest dose for recording. It should be during for a digital disc recorder. Sorry. The primary barrier for fluoroscopic x-ray two. II, right. The most effective means of reducing patient dose. Collimation. Collimation. The area of exposure. Okay. It's it's estimated that we could cut patients' dose fifty percent across the board if everybody just collimated to the area of interest only rather than leave the collimators open. Okay. Gonado shielding. How much lead required? 0.5. Right. 95% of occupational exposure comes from which two modalities? Mobile x-ray and fluoroscopy. Right. The minimum lead equivalency of an apron? 0.25 just recently been changed to for fluoroscopy. 0.5. What's the best and most accurate personal monitor? An OSL. Right. Okay, and the legal limit for a pregnant technologist during gestation the entire period? 500 milligrams. The most effective means of radiation protection to the radiographer? Distance. Congratulations. Bar tie.